Just one word, all he gives you. And then you got to build upon that one word. Amen. Yeah. And I tell you, the more you, that if he gives you something, study it. Build on it. Praise God. Look it up. Lord, it's for you. Yeah. It's for the, also, if you're a pastor or teacher, it's for the congregation. God knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I tell you, I'm glad that can be sensitive. I'm glad that you can be sensitive. I pray that God will just give us the anointing that we could hear yeah. what he has to say. And not only hear what he has to say, but do what he has to say. And when you can hear all, all the time, I, you know, these children growing up nowadays, they hear, they hear a lot, but they don't do that. You tell them over and over and over and over, and they just, it goes in one ear out the other. But I thank God, church, when God talks to you, you better listen. Amen. 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 Praise God. And, uh, uh, as we look into uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I want to wear these uh, uh, glasses or blow these words up bigger than what they are. Amen. And if you've got glasses that, like I have to read their glasses, you look out there and everybody's blown up. Yeah. Amen. So you, you kind of look over and everything. And so uh, I stumble and everything else in the chapter <laughs> Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 13, and we we'll preach on hits the love. Hits the love. Amen. Praise God. You know what? Love can do anything. Amen. It can break barriers. It can uh, cause a uh, family quarrels and just to settle down. Love is a, is a, is a big word amen. and a powerful word. Amen. Yep. And, and Paul recognized that you're here tonight because you love God. You're not here because you love yourself. You're here because you love God. That's right. Amen. Uh, and that should be the main purpose. You're here because you love God and love His Son. So the, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13, For whether we be besides ourselves, it is to God. Amen. A lot of people think for us Pentecostal people are beside ourselves. Amen. Well, but it's not that. We're just happy. And I said, we're just happy. Put the joy and the peace down in our soul, amen. And, I, uh, and people can be thinking we can be silent. In fact, I think it was a book of Peter said that they, they think it's strange, amen, because we don't run with them or whatever. And I don't think it's strange. God doesn't think it's strange. It may be strange to them, but it's not to us, praise God. And it says it is, it is to God, or whether we be sober. It is for your cause, for the love of Christ. Constrained. That word constrained is what I want to zero in tonight. That word means it's a, it's a force. There's a force behind love. I mean, love can move mountains. Love can do a lot of great things. It, it's also it's a, it's a force. It, it compels. It urges. It's irresistible power. There's power, amen, in love. Amen. And Paul recognized that. And Paul wanted to tell the Corinthian church, amen, just how much love, how powerful love is. Glory to God. And it says, Christ constraineth in us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and he that died for all. Jesus died for all. Amen. And it says that for all that they which live should not live his forth. Amen. All right, live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Jesus paid a great price, amen, amen because he loved us, amen? amen. And, and the love, which I'll get to that just in a few moments. But the, you know what, church? God loves us, amen, so much. Right. Amen. And church, we're here tonight, and, and we got victory tonight, is because of God. Amen. And, and God loved us even before we loved Him. But as I begin to think about that, we're, we're saved, we're delivered, we're sanctified, we're justified, we're made holy, amen, because, amen, of God. And He gave us the power, amen, to become sons and daughters. You're not a son and daughter for God just because you should have what you don't know or how much you are or who you are. You're here because God loved you, amen. amen. And, and the Bible says in 1 John, thank you, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, it says, You have known and believed the love that God hath, hath to us. God is love, and he that loveth, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein our, our love made perfect, 
that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we, praise God, in, the, in this world. So God is telling us, praise God, that God is love. And because God is love, the Bible said that he sent his only son down here. Now, church, God didn't have to save us. I mean, God could have just uh, zapped us. He could have just done whatever he wanted to and started all over again. But the love, the, the love of God constrained it to him. Amen. You, you know what I'm talking about? There was such a love, amen, for, for God. When God made man and everything, there was a love there that constrained his God. And he wanted the best for his children. God was the best for his children. God was the best for you. And God was the best to love you. And I thank God tonight, he has a love, amen, that constrained his, his, himself. He could have, he could have, when we failed him, turned our back upon him or whatever, he could have just snapped us out. We would be in the devil's hell. But his love constrained him that he gave us long suffer and, and, and gave us time, amen, to turn around and come back to him. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap, church. Praise God. See, it was the love of God that he gave his son. He could have destroyed us, amen, but his love constrained us. The Bible says God so loved the world I mean, he said, I, I love the world. I love what I made. I love man. I made man. And he, but even though man fell, praise God, his love was there to persuade that he was willing, amen, to give his only begotten son, amen, that we could, amen, be, be here tonight. He saved us from the very pits of hell. He saved us. And we, we, was, we were such a terrible fix and, and, and going in, in, a, in a terrible way, but yet God loved us so much that he was willing to give his, and his son down here and, and give us another opportunity and give us, amen, eternal life. Glory to God. And I thank God for that tonight. Now, church, a lot of people, don't, they, they don't understand the love of God. It's the love of God that we're here tonight. It's the love of God that our children is, is still, even though they may not be saved, but they still have a time and opportunity. It's the love of God. Amen. Thank God, church, his love constrains <coughs> all, the, all the world and everything else because he loved his people. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The Bible tells us, like I said a while ago, that, that he, we're, we're we're not here because of ourselves. Right. You can't buy your way in. You can't work your way in. You can't be a good enough to, amen, to get into heaven. But God, amen, give us the power, amen, to become sons and daughters of God. And I thank God for that tonight. I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. Like I said, you couldn't buy your way in. You couldn't work your way in. Okay, how could you? What? You couldn't make it to heaven. And you couldn't be one of God's children. Amen. The Bible says it says, in St. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many <coughs> as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them, amen, that believe. And that's all it took, church. I believe what, the, what that song said. I believe he's a son of God. I believe he died on Calvary. I believe his blood was shed for you and me. I believe there was a love of God, amen, and, and, the, and the love that constrained him that we could be sons and daughters of God. And church, I thank God for that tonight. God, God is good. God is, I said God is good. God is a loving God. God is a great God. Church, because we look into him and see how much love that he had for us and have for us. If, it, if we just look into his word and, and get, have a relationship with him, we can understand the love that God has for us. Can I hear an amen? amen. The Bible tells us, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of, of the flesh, nor the will of man. Nothing we can do that we can be, uh, be, we can be saved and have the power to do it. Amen. Nothing else can do it. And it says, and, and the word, would, and it says here that nor the blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Church, I thank God for the love of God. Amen. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God for his long suffering. I thank God God is a God of love. That's why we're here tonight. 
His love constrained it himself. And he just, I mean, <coughs> could you imagine for 120 years when he made the heavens and the earth and when he made man, for 120 years he suffered with long suffering and constrained himself and tried every way in the world, amen, to save mankind. But yet they turned their back upon God. If they only knew the love and how God was constrained himself, and for 120 years, as as Noah built the ark, and, as, and he preached to them that God was going to destroy the earth with water and everything. Yet they, they didn't take no heed to it. But out of the love and of God, he waited and waited until there was no way he could, could, could do the job. So he finally took Noah and his family, shut up in the ark, and destroy <coughs> the world. Amen. But I'd love to see where he said for, he suffered. Think about that. All the sin and everything was going on. Church, we're living in that day today. I have never seen so much sin and, and everything else. I mean, there's homosexuals are killing babies. I mean, they, they turn their back up for God. They're actually cursing God, denying God, making fun of God, and everything. And, it, it's, and God, it's, it's, His love is constraining and holding Himself back. Amen. That somewhere, somehow, He might save them. But church, after a while, that love that constrained Him is not going to hold Him any longer, just like He did in the days of Noah. Amen. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it should also be coming of the <laughs> Son of Man. And church will there. I said the sin abounds and everywhere, but yet God's love constrained him that he just could open the door of wrath and just pour his wrath upon his people. Or not on his people, but on the people that, that turned their back upon him. His love constrained him. And his love gave us his son that you're not to be saved and we don't have to worry about the wrath to come. I tell you, church, I thank God there's a peace and a joy in serving God. Amen. Amen. We don't have to worry about the wrath to come. The Bible says, amen, he saved us from the wrath to come. And that gives you a peace of mind that he's coming back. Yeah. Amen. But you know what the Bible says? God sent his son. Amen. He come, up, he come down and become flesh. Amen. To suffer, amen, for you and I. And church, if you look in the Bible and read the Bible, you will know how much he suffered, amen, and how much love that he had. Yeah. When he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he didn't have to come down here. <coughs> he didn't have to come down here. He didn't have to go to Calvary. But you know what? He loved He loved mankind. He loved his father. He loved us. That he was willing to go ahead and, and, and suffer through the pain and take the curse that on that cross that we could have salvation and have deliverance. Amen. Amen. Love persuaded Jesus to do that. Amen. The Bible tells us in Matthew, in Matthew 26, verse 42, he, and he, he, he prayed, he saw God. He said, Lord, if it's your will. I mean, he realized, church, he, it wasn't like a, I mean, a, a, he, he knew the pain. He knew the agony. He knew exactly what he was going to go through because God had told him in his word what was going to happen to him, how it was going to happen to him, and yet he was willing to go to Calvary to save our souls and to deliver us from the wrath to come. The love of Jesus constrained him in him that we could be saved tonight, Lord, and Amen. we ought to praise him. We ought to worship him. We ought to put up holy hands to him because of all the love, amen, that he had for us. The love of Jesus was sweet enough that he was willing to die for us and to suffer for us. Amen. Hallelujah. He went, to, he went to and prayed to the Father, sweat because of drops of blood. But he said, nevertheless, Father, if it's your will, I'll go ahead and do it. Because he loved man. Amen. He loved the plan of God. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. And from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness. And the first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth. But to him that loved us. He him that loved us. He loved us. He knew what was going to happen, Brother Jack. Amen. He knew how the suffering, what suffering he was going to have to suffer. Amen. And how his body was going to be beaten. And they say he was he was beyond recognition. 
that, that when they saw him, they didn't know who he was. He was beat and bruised and, and everything else because the club constrained him to do it. <coughs> because he loved us. He loved us and washed us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That will that'll, or break your heart. Yeah. And to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, now he has made us kings and priests unto God, his Father, to him be glory and demand forever and ever. Amen. I thank God tonight he loved us so much. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Love constraineth. Paul said, Love constraineth him. Love constraineth God. And God constraineth, or Jesus constraineth, his love constraineth. He was what he would die for. But that he don't stop there. Oh, when I got saved. When you got saved, can I hear an amen? amen. You, had, you got the love of God in you. Amen. I said you got the love of God in you. Oh, you and, and you wonder why you do the things for God. It's because the love of God lives in you. And he's given you the love. Amen. That the love constrains you. Have you ever wondered, amen, the son of the thing? And I, I, I took a time to write this down. See, it's the love, it's, it's the love that we have for Jesus <coughs> that constraineth me in you. You're here tonight because you love Jesus. And in church, let me tell you something. It pays off in the what do you call it? It pays off. Amen. 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 <laughs> the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, you wonder. Before I got saved, I didn't have the love of God in me. I had all kinds of weights, and I had all—I was walking all kinds of sin. Oh, you listen to what I'm saying. Amen. I'm not proud of what I did, and a lot of people done a lot, a lot worse than I did. Or, amen. But really, sins and weights are the same thing. And you ever wonder why, as you, as you got saved and, and walked in grace and knowledge of God? That you want to lay these things aside. You want to stop doing it the book that you couldn't be born. I tried to quit drinking. I tried to quit smoking. I tried to quit a lot, doing a lot of things. But I couldn't do it. Because I didn't have the love. You didn't have the love that constrained you to do what you're doing now. Can I hear an amen? amen. Praise God. You didn't have the love. But now you got the love. That love constraineth you. That's why Paul tells us there in Hebrews, says, let us lay aside every weight and see what's so easily set us. And let us run the race with patience, the race that is set before us, and looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. Praise God, church. <clears throat> the world looks at us. Some even mocks make fun of us. Yeah. But they wonder why we do what we do. You know, you know, they see that you don't go to those places that you used to go. You don't, you don't say the same that you used to say. You don't talk like the way you used to talk. You don't do things like you used to do. And they know you. Amen. You, I didn't have to tell a lot of people that I got saved when I went to work. They knew I got saved because they watched me. And they're watching you. But most of all, they thought it was, they think it's strange and then because you're doing what you're doing, but they don't realize I couldn't do that before I got saved. But when I got saved, the love of God came into me. Oh, I said the love of God came unto me. Yes. I said the love of God came into me. Yes. And the love of God constrained me, yes. glory to God. That now I'm saved and I, I don't have the same conversation. <laughs> I'm not living the same life. It's because the love of God is in me. And I do it because love yes. constrained me. Hallelujah. Give them all the hand. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. And we try to do that now. For I got saved, the commandments didn't even enter my mind. Right. Amen. Amen. But when I got saved, the love constrained me to when I it says and the thing that I was going to give you just a little things. Now we don't have to commit adultery. Some do, some commit adultery. And I'm not so about committing adultery with a man or woman. Sometimes we have other gods in our lives. 
Yeah. Hello. The Bible tells us, first of all, in Jude, verse 21, and this is a must. Now, we can lose that love. The Bible says that the, the church of Laodicea left their, uh, the church of Ephesians left their first love. We can grow <coughs> cold and indifferent and lose that, well, lose that honeymoon. You know, it, uh, we know what a honeymoon is. Yep. We'll do anything for our wives or, or vice versa. But we love them. But after 50 years, there, there, there's a love there. In fact, it's, a, it's greater love because it's not, a, it's not a, a physical love, but it's a love that comes from the heart and the spirit. Can I hear an amen? amen. And, then, and then that's what we're to have. We're to have the love of God in us that we love Jesus, amen, more than we first loved him. Because we have a deeper experience and we've got more of God in us. So the Bible says, keep yourself in the love of God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Are you going back to the same things you used to do? Are you, are you watching the things that you used to do was a sin or, or was fitted by God? Are you, going, are you losing that relationship with God, that love that constrained you? Hello? Amen. <coughs> the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 5. There's five verses there, but uh, we need to talk about that because... Uh, we need to keep ourselves in the love of God because love what constrains us. It's, it's a powerful thing to have because it causes us to do many splendid things. <sighs> Amen. This says, For mortify therefore your members which are up on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate effects, that means unholy desires, evil conception and covetous, which is idolatry. Amen. For which they say, for, for which sakes the wrath of God cometh for the children of disobedience, in which we also in which you also walk sometime. In other words, church, we used to walk that way before we got the love of God in us. But now see about when the love <coughs> uh, uh, grow cold and indifferent with us, and the honeymoon is over, if we ain't careful because of the flesh and because of the this old natural person we live in. Amen. We'll start kind of gradually going back the way that we used to walk the way and have the conversation. And God said that you need to get back and keep yourself in the love because it's the love of God that will keep you from doing this and it helps you from keeping doing that. I do these things because I love Jesus and I, and I stopped it and we need to get back stopping it again. We just go back to Calvary. And I hear an amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In which, verse 7 says, in which he also walked some time when you lived in them. But now you also put off all these anger. We so church people are so easy to get that angry. You used to have that love of God, somebody could smack you, whatever, you, did, you wouldn't get angry about it. Right. Oh, you, you, you wouldn't want to rebel. But now we live in a Christian world, Brother James, you hit somebody, slap somebody, you're going to get slapped back for your trouble. Amen. Amen. Or okay, get curse all the pieces and everything else. Yes, yeah. Because we want to hit back. And I have a problem with anger just like you do. But that's where we need to know we're keeping our commandment because we love God. Love will constrain us from doing these things because we love Jesus so much. I love Jesus. I said, I love Jesus. And the reason, I, the reason I walked the way I try to walk, I had trouble sometimes. I know you guys don't have no trouble, but I have trouble sometimes to walk in the way that Jesus loves me. Because some church, we tell you something, sometimes have, 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 have I lost that love that constrained me to do these things that when I first got saved. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 7, in which we also <coughs> walk sometimes, which we live in them, but now you also put off this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Boy, I tell you sometimes, I, I know some lady on, on Facebook, and I've heard something. I don't say a word. I just take, put a, I used to put a smiley face. Now I put a face that's crying. 
They know how to say that. They, they understand what I'm saying. Because of some of the things, that, the words that they use on Facebook. Amen. So if they want to delete me, that's all right with me. But you can't say one minute you love God and love the devil at the same time. Amen. You can't walk in the places you used to walk to and say you love Jesus. Hello. You can't watch the shows and some of the things that you watched when you first when you first found Jesus. Amen. But now you're gradually going back. And we gotta watch yourself, church. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his, his deeds and have put on the new man, which renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created you. Praise God. It's the love of God. When I have a problem with one of these, now Paul was talking to the Christian church. To the, to the born again believers. He wasn't talking to the sinners. A lot of times people sit back there, well, he's not talking to me, he's talking to sinners. No, no, he's not talking to sinners because the, the sinners, a lot of times sinners are not in the church. He's he preaching to us. Yeah. Hello. So if we have a problem with these, we just need to keep coming back and say, Jesus, restore my love. Because I want that love constrain me to not be doing these things. And I, want, and I let you know that I love you. Love constrains. Paul said love <coughs> constrains me. Love constrains us God without pouring his wrath. And church, one day his wrath is going to come upon us. Love constrains us through Jesus Christ that he was willing to die and suffer for us. And, that, and we need to love him and, and adore him and worship him and appreciate him. Because he loved us and worshiped us. Praise God, they made us keen to preach. Church, we got something to look forward to. Amen. But we got to keep in the love of God. Love is powerful. I said love will stop a lot of things. Amen. And we all have a problem having that love frustrated us. Amen. Amen. We sing that song. I, I think I wrote that down because I want to remember it. So you get old, you can't remember things. I'm looking for his love. Is that we sing a song looking for his love or something like that? I'm not sure. Well, anyway, I am looking for his love. I want his love to be poured on me. Amen. Church, the love of God will restrain you. It will, it will cause you to shut your mouth. Not using communication, not not having that big long time. Hello. Amen. Now, church, I know this is just a little message tonight, but this is a powerful message because we need to get back let, let the love control us. Amen. Is what I'm talking about. Love controls my mouth. Love controls my hands. Love controls my feet. Love controlled me because I love Jesus so much that I let his love constrain me. Skip, what's that? Amen. So if we're having a problem with the little things, I mean, <coughs> uh, these, uh, if, if, if you don't keep them, don't build for them, they won't send you to hell. you got to get rid of them before they do send you to hell. you got to see your problem. And this word right here, when the preacher preaches it, Amen. It's a mirror. It don't reflect me. It reflects you and me. Yeah. Amen. They had mirrors if you walk into the temple, the holy holies there. And they had mirrors. And, and you walked in, you can see your condition. James said something about a mirror. You know, you go in there and look at yourself. Well, oh, I need a shave or whatever. Then you turn around and go out and you forget all about it. But if you keep reading the Bible thing, it's a mirror to you. It lets you know how you look, where you're standing, how you're walking, how you're talking, because it will allow the love of God to constrain you. Yeah. If you're having problems with some of these things, <coughs> it means that you, you're, you're leaving your love or left your love, your first love. Yeah. Love will constrain you. They wonder why are they going to church, why are they doing this, or why are they walking like this? Why they're so different? <coughs> because you love God. You gotta be different. 
I said, you've got to be different. Amen. And if you can't be different, if you're not sure you're different, there's something wrong. <coughs> Amen. Would you stand tonight? <coughs>